Hi, I'm Scott Holiday from the Rival Sons, and I'm going to share my goodies that I play on with you right now. So um, we're going to start with the guitars, and um, my good friend Diamond Drapes is going to hand them to me. So here we have um, one of my oldest guitars, oldest that I've owned the longest, and oldest, I think, oldest of all of them on the uh, in the rack. It's a 62 uh, Fender Jazz Master. I've replaced the pickups here. You can see these aren't uh, normal... Jazzmaster pickups, they're actually Lawler P90s, and um, they're beautiful and wonderful. Everything else is how I got the guitar. It's been refinned, but I think it was probably refinned in 1963, and I liked it all beat up like this. Uh, it actually had these knobs on it when I got it, which are unoriginal. They're uh, black face fender knobs. And you can see here, if you look at, at this, this lets you know that this is a slab board as the rosewood crosses through the nut. Let's be really nerdy about this. There you go. I, th I use this in Open G and uh, play all those songs on this. So here comes another one. Thank you, Diamonds. This is my second oldest guitar we have on tour, and it is my 1965 Firebird 1. But you're thinking, oh, I know about Firebirds. A Firebird 1 doesn't have two covered pickups like that. doesn't make any sense at all. So, yeah, I've taken the original guard out, which was two P90s originally, and dropped in these custom pickups and guard and rewiring it. And uh, <clears throat> the original is all intact, so it's safe. And uh, this thing has been well used. I love it. It's a beautiful guitar. Pickups were wound by Tom Short, and they're wonderful. And we're going to move on now. Sir, <clears throat> this is one of my favorite new, newer guys. Um, definitely my favorite new builder and pretty much uh, what I'm using mostly these days. It's a builder named Doug Cower. You can see his name up here. Doug Cower has a lot of beautiful guitars. This one is very uh, uh, similar to a, a Gibson Firebird. It's actually called a Banshee. These pickups here were done uh, by by my friend Chris Klein. They use actual 50s magnets in there from Gibson. And uh, they're like basically like a vintage PAF instead of a Firebird uh, thing. And all this stuff here you're looking at, all this pinstriping, was all done by hand. And uh, he's also signed it. Where did he sign it? Somewhere on here he signed, I think right here. Now that's Doug's signature. But uh, somewhere on here, the pinstriper had signed it. So this is all hand done. It's on the back as well. And it's pretty cool. I use this in the uh, Keep On Swinging video, and I'll probably use it forever now. Next, this is the guitar. Oh my god, this thing's heavy. This is uh, probably the guitar that I'm uh, most known with, or whatever. Um, I use this in the Pressure and Time video, and. I've used this the most in this band, probably. It looks like it's actually a 1965 Firebird, but it is not. It is actually a 1999 Custom Historic. And I've replaced all the wiring. You can see from playing slide on this thing, I have just done my own personal relicking to it. These pickups were also done by Tom Short. It's a very aggressive sounding guitar. It's a humongous neck, gigantic neck guitar. Pelham Blue, Firebird 7, I love you. Okay, here we go. This is my new favorite guitar right now. It's another one of them Doug Cower guitars. So in the studio, I, uh, I use a, a, Gretsch, white, uh, a Gretsch White Penguin that uh, my producer owns. and It's beautiful and really cool, but I'm a Firebird guy. So I got together with uh, the people over at Cower and tried to design this idea that would be a cross between a Gretsch White Penguin and the Gibson Firebird, and this is what we came up with. <clears throat> so it's got three TV Jones, the Bigsby, the clear gold back painted, and he did this really amazing job. If you can see going all the way up the neck, it's bound all the way around the body like this, and it goes all the way up the top, up around here. And that's actually like Gretsch sparkle, like what they wrap the old drums in. So this was a really difficult thing for him to do. Um, and I love this thing. It sounds amazing. I used it on pretty much 90% of the new record, Great Western Valkyrie. Next, I got this guitar from him, this white guitar I just showed you. And uh, I had to find a buddy for it to back it up. So uh, right before I went on tour, 
Doug built me this, and he literally built this in six days, and I carried it on the plane. The rest of them shipped. <coughs> so it's very Gretsch-like with the knobs, with the pickups, with the rings, with the back here. And the, all, all the accoutrements are very Gretsch-esque. The color is very Gretsch. It's, it's a flat Cadillac green. I don't know. I, I, this was a very unexpected guitar, and now I use it all over the set, and I think it's pretty gorgeous. It's a pretty nice guitar, man. So, um, again, there's his name. That's Doug Cower, and he makes good guitars. Bless the man. Thank you, Diamonds. I think that's all the guitars we're going to look at today, and we will move on to the pedal boards down here. Okay, so this is, uh, this is the power station. Ipso, NASA, master control. Um, the robots I use, we'll start here. We go in there. That goes right here to my CAE. It's a Dunlop CAE wall. And that's it, it's wonderful. Um, next here is the Zvex Fuzz Pro. This is almost like a theremin fuzz, kind of freak out, and it can be controlled with this copper plate. You can see that light on top going on and off. It makes a bunch of space noises. Next here is something I rehoused. It's a mystery pedal. You'll have to find out what that is if you do your research. I'm not going to tell you right now. But it's called Zap. And it's fuzzy and it's dirty and exciting. This is a good friend of mine, uh, Basic Audio, John Lyons. Basic Audio Gnarly Fuzz. Great pedal. Use that all over the place on all sorts of goodies. This uh, lets me switch between my two heads, which we will go over to you, the uh, orange amps in a minute. This lets me go between a cleaner and dirtier one. Back up top here is uh, an overdrive type of thing. This is an Analog Man King of Tone version 4. Next to it, my Keeley Time Machine Boost. And uh, this is basically the old uh, Range Master, kind of a, a treble booster. Very point to point inside. Looks like a little amp. It's wonderful. Uh, next to it, the Micro Pog by Electro Harmonics. And. Uh, Something I use for like electric fan and, and, and does some octavey kind of stuff. To it, the uh, way huge ringworm, ring modulator, very unmusical and hard to use pedal. I love it. Next to it is my Kevin Randall KR Musical Megavibe. This is pretty much the most accurate uh, reproduction of a Univibe that I found. I mean, it's pretty much identical inside there, even down to the little old light bulb they put in them. Um, and I will jump over. This controls the speed to that, just so you guys know. Um, here we go. This one, this is my volume pedal. It's a Dunlop, and it makes the volume more or less. Okay. Next to it, my tuner. Peterson Classic Stamp. Down here is the Strymon Glint, and this does uh, all my reverb and tremolo sounds, more or less. This is the, the master control for, for that stuff that I use. Above it is another tremolo that I use for... Uh, uh, just a couple other things a little bit quicker, and it's a Demeter Tremulator. Next to it is the Destination Rotation. It is a simulation of a Leslie speaker. I really only use the fast, the fast speed on it. <coughs> and they don't make this one anymore, so you can't buy it, but it's the first one. He, he makes other stuff, and it's, it's really, really good. I recommend him. Uh, next to it is one of my delays, the Aquapus. That's got to be the best named pedal on the board. The Puss. Uh, it's an analog delay. Below it is a pedal that is very popular. Everyone uses this thing. And um, a lot of people complain about it, trying to say it doesn't sound good. I don't know. I think it sounds real good because I got a whole box of them delays and I still want this one on my board. And you can see, usually when you buy it, it's got the red LEDs. Naturally, mine's better because it's got the blue LEDs. It must be better. This is what happens when you give it to uh, Robert Keeley, who did the time machine boost, and they, they, they can go through that and lower the noise and just make it better. And this thing is, uh, the guys over at Dunlop wired together an expression pedal for me. Took the guts out of the volume. It's the same thing as this pedal over here, but it, it, it controls delay times for this. So I think that's it. It's all sitting atop the trailer trash boards with locking Nutrix jacks and got power supplies underneath. It's a magical, magical thing. Okay, and I'll take you over to my amps now, so come this way. Okay, so here are the amps I'm using on this tour, and I've been using them for a while. I mean, not just this tour. 
Um, and I use the orange OR50. As you can see, this is number one. This is my dirty head. And it gets really loud and angry. And it controls these guys. And a beautiful light. Woo! Okay, and this one is the cleaner one. And it controls these guys. So that switch I showed you on the pedal board jumpers me between these two, and they sound real good. I don't know what to say. They're great. They're great. I think that's really it. So um, there you go. You can all go buy everything I have now. It's going to cost you thousands and thousands of dollars. You'll probably go home and want to play Rival Sun songs. But at least you know what I use. So.